Hey everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome to Friday Night Fright number six. So this week I've created an explosion box and I used a kit by Photoplay. And it was fabulous because it just took so much of the work away and it was so wonderful to use. So um, I highly recommend this product, you guys. I love it. And this is part of their Maker Series. It's a 4x4 black box. You can get this in white as well. It does come with full instructions and diagrams and everything else that you need to create your box. However, if you don't like following along with that, they do have a video tutorial and I'll put a link to that in my description box. And so you can't go wrong either way. And I and I am not affiliated with them in any way, but I'm just in love with this product. And I've always wanted to make an explosion box, but I didn't want to take all the time. <laughs> and this took all of that time away. I just had to I just had to fold up the score lines and add my adhesive and done. Having said that, however, I do have some tips and some tricks following um, the presentation on my box because I did run into a few little things and I'd rather you not mess up like I did and waste some of your design paper. Um, you know, sometimes when you have um, projects like this, there's always going to be a little bit of a, a tweak or whatnot because um, nothing's ever 100% perfect, right? Uh, or straight when you're working with paper. And so um, keep watching for that. And then also I do have a surprise in the middle of the box and I do have a quick tutorial on that as well. Okay. So I have used, oh, love this. I have used Photo Plays Fright Night by Tracy Smith. This is now one of my favorite Halloween papers of all time. Love it. Love the colors. And not only is it the colors, but it's that they're so vivid and rich in color and love the images. And yeah, my favorite. I don't know why I didn't buy two of everything or three or something like that. So I could keep using it for a long time to come. But I didn't. Anyway, on the lid of my box, I have a little die cut spider web that was in my stash. And it was bigger than the lid, so I did move it towards the top and the left and then just trimmed along there to fit it onto my box. And then I've added some three, uh, these three stickers here from the sticker sheet. And I have popped them up using um, either chipboard, black chipboard or black foam tape, either or. And then also you can see here on this little word strip and the jack-o'-lantern, I have these little tiny blue stars. These are actually individual stickers and they had these, oh my gosh, they are so tiny and so thin. Um, you have to be careful working with these. I was, I was placing one onto one of the pages inside and it just went flick. And <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, it disappeared anyway. Um, then I've topped this off with some blue. I, I'm just calling it blue, but it's kind of a teal, a deep teal and uh, this black tool here. And I just tied a knot in the center and, and glued that on. And I did not want to add any decoration to my box because I'm just in love with this paper and I don't want to cover that up. I mean, look at how beautiful that is with the candy and all those yellows and teals in there with the black and orange. So, so pretty. And I love how I combined it with the traditional black and orange on the top. Love it. My first explosion box ever and I'm so happy with it. So, and I, I just want to say too, also, I do apologize for a little bit of background noise there. Um, my husband is working from home today and, um, anyway, it's a kind of a, one of those days, right? <laughs> so you might hear some angry voices in the background. Okay. So here we go. Pulling off the lid. Woohoo. 
Isn't that wonderful? I love this. It's so fantastic. Oh my gosh. And I wanted to show you that I actually added paper to the inside of the lid as well. And here is my surprise. I added a cute little box that I made. Isn't this so fun? I love this. And so I do have a tutorial for the little box and all the measurements and everything. So it was really, I promise you, I made it this morning and it didn't take me very long at all. So, um, yeah, keep watching for the tutorial on that. I'm going to fill it with candy, but I wanted to show you that I've covered it with paper inside as well. And so this will hold quite a bit of candy, I think, depending on what candy you have, but cute. And this is also a great way to stash candy from my husband so he doesn't eat it all. We both love Milky Ways and so, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that's terrible, huh? I have always have to hide a little bit for myself. Okay, so anyway, um, there are three layers of boxes and you'll see all this in the tutorial and also on my tips and tricks and but this um, top layer layer has the pockets that are slashed or diagonal and I've just filled them with some elements from the paper collection I also had the ephemera package and this is probably my favorite element from there love that cute little ghost he says hi and there's a period next to it so hi you know it's just so cute and I also backed that with some cardstock so that it would just make it a little more sturdy and add a cute place for a photo mat. So this is two and an eighth by two and seven eighths. I added a sticker from the sticker sheet and then just drew a line there to make the little dangling spider web. And then on this side, I have my cute little eek sticker and this is one of the cut aparts. And I did back this with the black and orange polka dot paper. And I've cut this to two and a half by three and an eighth. So I've turned it down quite a bit from the original size, which was three by four. And then I've added these bat stickers on the top. And I thought they were the same size, but this one here was a little bit larger. So it was a happy accident though, because um, I had the smaller one on the front, thank goodness and it just created a bit of a white winged tip bat, which I thought coordinated really well with the white on the 31, so it was a very happy accident there. Then these two pockets I have on this one, this blue ephemera, and then I've added a couple of more of those little bat stickers. And then this one has a piece of ephemera. I love that, be very, afraid be afraid be very afraid and then these tags are identical so I'll only pull this one out and I created these on my silhouette I had in my library a really elegant tag with lattice work on the front and everything and I but I thought the top would make a really cute tombstone shaped tag if I kind of widened or thickened it up and um, made it shorter so I did that and took away the lattice work that was off the top. And so this was two and a half by three and a quarter. And I did do an offset. And I want to say I did 0.45 or something like that on the offset. Um, you know, you could go thicker, thinner, depending on what you like. And um, then I've just uh, added some hole reinforcers there. Um, and I did use my my die from Elizabeth Craft Designs for that. Um, it's a little bit smaller than my We Are Memory Keeper punch, and I needed it to be a little smaller for some of these smaller things, so I used that instead of the, the punch. And oh, I didn't show you the back, did I? Cute candy paper with the orange hole reinforcer on the back, and then I've just topped that with some burnt orange ribbon that I had on my stash. And on the back of these pockets is the black and orange polka dot. Moving on to the next pocket, these are all identical. I did not add any embellishments because I didn't want to cover up the beautiful paper. And I just love that. 
and all of the tags are identical also. But this is where I ran into some trouble, and so please watch my hints and tricks I'm following so that you don't waste any of your design paper, because I did have a couple issues. I highly recommend this product. I, I promise you I would buy it again. However, you know, and it wasn't a difficult fit, so it's just something that you want to be aware of, so please keep watching. Um, so the tags inside are also all identical. And these are two or three inches by three and a half. Rounded the corners there on the bottom. And then added my favorite Halloween ribbon, which I used the very last of it. I have no more. Wish I would have bought 10 rolls of these things when I bought it. But it's transparent and it says the words boo so with an exclamation point and metallic there. It's just very subtle, but it's so pretty. And then on the back side of this pocket is this um, wonderful design paper with all the fun elements in the collection, the charms and the kitty and the cauldrons and just love this, love, love, love this paper. And the final outside pockets are again all designed, um, as far as the design paper, it's all the same. I have the black. Um, spider web on the bottom and the, the ghosties flying around on the top there and then each of the four have these photo mats that are three and a quarter square and then the design paper is three and an eighth square on this pocket I have this um, spider web and the spiders from the sticker sheet and any of the stickers that are hanging over the pocket, I used my, my powder to take away the sticky on the back. And then this pocket and this pocket are similar in that I have these cute little coffin tags. And I again created these on my silhouette. And I did, um, I'll give you the measurements, but then I did do an offset. Again, it was like 0.45 or 0.5 or something like that. Um, but the measurements on this is um, one and three quarter by three and a half, and then the smaller one is one and a half by three inches. You know, give or take, because I did do that really slight offset on those. And then on this side, I have a piece of ephemera here and then a witch hat from the sticker sheet. And then the cute little tags on the back or inside the pocket. And then also these two pockets are decorated very similar. So I have this border sticker here from the 12 by 12 sticker sheet, and I've just angled that to fit there. And then I have a ghost sticker, and I have my, my little stars here. And this was supposed to have the three stars, but this is where the one flicked away and disappeared. And then this pocket, the only difference is the three, it has one more star, and then the ghost is a little different. And then these tags here are exactly the same size and shape as the ones that I've already showed you in the center. Um, however, these I've um, added some borders. Uh, I have this border um, sticker here and a piece of the ephemera. And this is ephemera piece. And then this is also from the ephemera package. Um, this said Happy Halloween, and I just cut off the happy and centered that onto the paper there. And I think it came out really cute. And then on the back, I have two pieces of cardstock that are two and three eighths by two and a half. So, um, just a place for a photo mat there. And that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with this project. And so um, keep watching for my, my 
tips and tricks and the little tutorial and um, I would so appreciate it if you guys would um, give my video a like and hit that thumbs up and, um, and I invite you to subscribe so you can join me for my upcoming videos. All right, so I decided that I wasn't going to use the little accordion booklet that goes inside of the explosion box. I decided to make a cute little box to hold candy or whatnot inside. And so to make that, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock. The first one will be cut at seven and a half by seven and a half. And you're going to score each side at two and a half inches. And the smaller one is four and one eighth by four and one eighth, and you're going to score that at three quarters of an inch on every side. And what you're going to do is cut this pinwheel style. So you're going to uh, cut this first score line on the right up to the score line that's going in the opposite direction. So I don't know, I know this is better than black, but I still don't know if you can see these score lines very well, but hopefully once I get started cutting this, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just cutting the right side and then flipping it over and cutting the right side until I have four cuts into the paper. And it's, like I said, it's gonna be um, pinwheel style. Oops. Just trying to fold these in so that you can see how I've cut that like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and angle those corners. And you can do this as you go. So I think it's a lot quicker to do it that way. But So that's all there is to it. And then you just go ahead and burnish all of your folds. And then you're going to have something that looks like this. And I've gone ahead and placed my design papers on the box because I just think it's easier to do it this way. And so you're going to need a piece of paper that is two and a half by two and a half for the top and also for the inside of the lid. And then for the outside, you're going to need pieces that are two and a half by five eighths and then the same thing for the inside but you you don't attach these until you have put your box together so to do or your lid together so to do that you're just going to attach tape or glue here and then just fold that piece to the inside like that and then just keep going like like so you know pinwheel style again you're gonna and you want those little flaps to be glued inside of the sides of your lid like that and then once that's glued down then you can put your little sides in like that so Again, you're putting the glue on this side as your the top is facing up. You're putting the glue or tape there and then folding it in to the inside of that lid. And for the box, it's pretty much the same uh, thing. You were going to go ahead and, and cut this pinwheel style. So I'm going to start on the right side here and cut on that score line up to the score line that's going in the opposite direction. However, on this I'm going to make an extra cut because I don't really want the little flaps that large. So I'm going to turn it the opposite way and I'm going to go ahead and cut about so that I have a half an inch from this score line right here. And I'm going to just cut like that and then I'm going to cut it at an angle like that. And so then I'm going to turn it back around this way. Well, no, I'm just going to leave it this way and then cut this one. Anyway, just if it's easier for you to cut your pinwheel first and then go back and do this so that you um, don't forget which side you're cutting, um, you can do it that way too. So, so go ahead and cut that right side up to the next score line and flip it. Cut that 
right side, and then the final side. And then I'm just going to turn it and cut it from the opposite direction that I just cut, a half an inch from that score line. Just keep in mind it's going to look pinwheel style. So, you, so if you're cutting, you don't want to cut those middle squares. Oops, and I forgot to do my little angles on some of these. So you have something that looks like this, and you're going to go ahead and burnish all those folds. Just kind of move those out of the way for a minute. So you're going to have something that looks like this. And for your design paper, you're going to cut two and three eighth inch squares. And you're going to need five of those. And um, I've gone ahead and done the inside of the box as well. And then the same thing, you're going to attach tape, your tape or your glue to the outside edge of that flap. And then you're going to go ahead and do the same thing. You're going to just attach each one side at a time until your box is together with those flaps going on the inside of the box. And then you can cover those ugly flaps up by adding the design paper which again is two and three eighths inch square. And they're just gonna go set inside your, your box like that. All right, so my hints and tricks for you are to first have your design papers cut and ready to go because I think it's so much easier to place the design papers onto the box before you assemble your pockets. And especially even with these slash pockets, I had a hard time getting that corner down in there when it was already folded and glued over or taped over. So um, just keep that in mind. And then once my inside papers were all in and I then I folded the pockets over and attached those, then I flipped it over and did the back side. Then I went on to the center box, did the same thing, put my papers on and then flipped it over and then folded my pockets over, then flipped it over and put the design papers on the back side. On the notches, I found that the one inch punch did not really work well for me. I don't know if my one inch punch is a lot different than the instructor had but it just made this huge gaping um, space here with the black card stock and I found that by using my one and a quarter inch punch yes I have a little bit more of a, a wider um, space on the sides and a little bit more shallow here but I just think overall to me it looked better it was more eye appealing than the other way on these, I would make a template for each and every pocket. I found that my pockets were not identical. I found that the notch might be a little over to the left on this one and maybe a little over to the right on the other one. So sometimes you can just flip that template over and use it the opposite way. But I didn't realize that till I'd already cut out and notched my design papers. So don't make that mistake. You'll waste all that design paper and just do a template for each and every pocket. Then also a little hint on your slash pockets. Again, these are the same thing, just different sizes and different directions. Your slash goes this way on that one and this way on this one, obviously. Um, I would recommend that you pick a paper that you're happy with, with both sides on the pocket so you're not wasting your paper. And, and then also your paper needs to be either directionless on both sides or only one side having a direction for example a top and a bottom if you cut a paper that has a top and a bottom on both sides then one side is just going to be upside down no matter what you do and then also make sure that when you're cutting that slash you know which way it's going so that you're you have your 
your top and your bottom here. Now, if you were to cut it this way, opposite the slash of the pocket, then your paper's gonna be sideways. And then also on on the lid, it's just easier to attach your design papers before you put your lid together. And you can also attach that center paper on the inside as well before you put your lid together. I just haven't done that yet because I don't know which paper I'm using. And then, of course, after your lid's assembled, then you can put your, your sides on. And then once all of your boxes are decorated, then you can attach them together. And I did use glue for that. I thought it was so much easier to um, start with the center and gluing it onto the, the outside box rather than the way they did it in the photo play tutorial. And what I did is I just made sure my corners are lined up. So my corners are going in a perfect diagonal. And, and if those corners are lined up, then you know that all your sides are lined up. So much easy and using glue helped me to maybe wiggle that around a bit and get it straight and rather than using the tape. I did use the tape recommended on, on putting the pockets together. They recommended a quarter inch tape and I think that's it for putting my box together. So if you do have any questions or comments, make sure that you leave those below and I will try to get back with you as soon as I can. So have fun putting your boxes together and I'll catch you guys next time. A thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Bye.